set up. I think we are set up. All right. Okay. So um, today we're going to be talking about um, those moments when you're rehearsing and feeling really, really a lot of freedom. And then when you get in front of the audience, in this case, more specifically in the theater, that you're really feeling that you have no access to that freedom and that you're feeling not free. Of course, it's similar. Uh, you could have that on film, right? But I think let's keep it um, for theater this time, just because it's going to be a little more graphic in the in the difference that you can have between, of course, rehearsal um, and um, when you're on stage in front of an audience. And so you might have you might have felt that before, like you're so excited, you're rehearsing and you like the project and you're involved with your character and you're really giving it everything that you have in rehearsal. And so you're excited about, you know, the wonderful ideas and creativity and freedom that you've uncovered in the rehearsal pro process. And then, you know, the performance starts and the audience is there and you're really, really like kind of a third of what you know that you were in re rehearsal. I can't say the word rehearsal, that's a problem. <laughs> and that of course can be so disappointing and frustrating because you've worked so hard and a lot, you've put in a lot of hours and a lot of your heart in the preparation. And then when the time comes to shine your light, it's it's so disappointing because it doesn't, the magic doesn't happen basically. And so it's not fulfilling for you. And then the people who come and see you, whether it's friends and family or even industry people, cannot really see what you're worth. And so it can it can feel really frustrating. And so you, you might have been in this spot many times. You might have been in this position every single time. And you might have actually tried to find ways outside of yourself to solve and to remedy um, to this situation. So you might think that there's something wrong with you. Um, so you need to take more classes and that you may have actually tried a lot of classes, a lot of books, a lot of podcasts, a lot of whatever's on social media, a lot of tricks to be able to be as free when you're performing in front of an audience as to when you're in rehearsal and it hasn't worked. And in our community, I see a lot of actors whether it's theater actors or movie actors, especially the ones who have been around for a very long time, um, they often come with this um, challenge. And even though they're working a lot and you might think, oh, so-and-so doesn't have that problem because they're working a lot and all the time, it's not true. Um, you know, even if people keep getting work, um, they're definitely good at what they do, but they know that they're actually not really fully showing up and therefore it's very painful for them to act it's uh, I've heard the word excruciating quite a couple times with um, known actors who are struggling to really be freely themselves in the moment of performing in front of an audience. Um, even when it's not in front of an audience, even when you're being interviewed by the press to just actually not be able to say what you truly want to say can be very painful and damaging for you as an actor yourself because you're keeping some truth in and you're faking it with something in the moment and you're not being yourself, you're not um, living your truth in that moment. And of course, as an actor, as an artist, that can be very painful because the whole point of you being an artist is to express your particular, your specific, your unique truth through whichever medium uh, you're using, whether it's painting, singing, acting. And of course, when you're interviewed, it's the same thing. You have an opportunity actually to be seen in what you have to offer in your medicine in the gift that you have to offer to the rest of the world. And if you're going to repress that in the moment and put something else on it, it's going to be very detrimental to you. And at the end of the day, the audience is not getting what they came for. They're not getting your pure, truthful, um, unlimited truth and freedom in the moment. And that's what they paid for, right? So everybody loses. So let's look a little bit at what is actually happening and how you can start moving f through that. So what's happening when you're rehearsing, and you might recognize yourself there, is that you're actually really in, um, 
in a curious state of mind. You're really interested by the experience that you're having with the character inside of the circumstances. So you're still pretty much in a playful zone. You're trying things out, you're exploring, you're experiencing, you're just throwing yourself in that direction and in this. And you're not um, putting some outside pressure on yourself as to how it should be. You're not trying to be interesting when you're in rehearsal. You're just interested in what's with you, which is the character inside of their circumstances. You're interested in that moment. You're not trying to be interesting. And of course, what's ha what's happening when you're in front of an audience because of your conditioning that has wired you to believe that there's a right way for you to behave, to feel, to talk, to act, you, suddenly uh, all of that condition comes on your shoulders and you're trying to do things right. You're trying to look good. You're trying to be appropriate and behave in a certain way so that you will be accepted, not rejected, so that you'll be loved, so that you'll be validated. And so when you're doing that, it shuts down all of your um, part that is actually interested, that is alive in the moment of with what's happening, that is curious, that is wanting to be the character who is living this specific situation. And so what takes over from the character is your ego who is trying to stay in control of the outcome. Your ego is wanting to be loved by the audience, is wanting to be liked by the audience, is wanting to look good for the audience, is wanting to please the audience, is wanting to please the director, is wanting to please the other people. And so your ego is taking over the performance. When you're in rehearsal, there's a big chance that your ego is not that, not that much there. It could be there a little bit because you might have some stuff going on with other actors. But most of you is actually in the interested zone. So you're interested with what's about to be lived through your character in this circumstance and how it's going to impact you. You're alive. And if you've noticed in your real life, you're interested. You're not trying to be interesting. If you're having a conversation with someone or a situation with something, you're interested in what's actually happening. You're present to the moment. You're fully alive. The second you're wanting to be interesting, you're actually trying to manipulate the outcome. And as you do that, you're no longer present. If you're no longer present, by definition, you can't be free. You're not even there. You can't be free or truthful. You're busy on another floor. You're busy on the third floor trying to manipulate everyone in the meeting into liking you. So it's not authentic. It has zero integrity. For you to try and go manipulate the next moment, the future, the part where you'll be validated and liked and right and good and all of that, is delusional because that moment doesn't exist. That third floor doesn't exist. You trying to influence the perspective of the audience is, is completely delusional. It's impossible. And by doing that, by being busy there, you're not here. And if you're not here, people can't sense you. They can't feel you. You can't resonate with them. You can't impact them. Your character is not alive. You're not there. It's all pretend. It's all fake, right? And so that is what is happening. When you're in rehearsal, you're not trying to manipulate the outcome. You're being curious. You're innocent. You're trying things out. You're like a child. And remember, when you were a child, you were in rehearsal all the time. You were always playing with your Play-Doh, your dolls, your trucks, whatever it is that you were playing with. You were curious. You were interested. You were living the experience to live the experience. Not to look around and see, is anyone watching me? Am I doing it right? The second you started doing this, am I doing it right? You were no longer playing because your attention went somewhere else. And so that's the problem. The reason why you're having that problem between your rehearsal and your performance in front of the audience is not because there's something wrong with you. It's not because there's something to fix with you. It's not because you need another acting class or an acting mentor who is going to tell you how to do it. You are your own mentor. You're your own self. You're your own guru. You're your own authority. It's really about you being here in the moment. It's about you being fully interested in the moment rather than trying to manipulate the outcome for the next moment. 
trying to not succumb to the pressure of the audience instead of letting it completely open you up, letting it crack you open and not be afraid of all those feelings, all that energy that's going to move through you. But you've been told to repress. You've been told to condition. You've been, uh, sorry, you've been conditioned to repress. You've been told to keep it all in, to behave normally like everybody else, to not have feelings, to not be afraid, to be confident all your life. And so as soon as those feelings come, you get out of the curiosity, you get out of being interested and actually responsible for your character's needs and you just run for your life. You go for your ego, you go for protection and attack and manipulating and trying to stay safe, which is not your job. It's not, um, it will, hi Candy, it will be in, in the, yeah, it will be saved in the feed. So you'll find this life. So yeah, your job is to is not to protect your ego. Your job is to really be present and really defend your character's needs, not your ego's needs. So how do you do that? It's not because you understand this mentally that you'll be able to show show up this way, right? So the way that we do it in our community is we help actors progressively deconstruct the ego, the protection mechanisms, the resistance, everything that is taking you away from the present moment in order to defend and protect yourself in the future delusional moment that doesn't even exist. So we help you unlearn, decondition, deconstruct, unwire, deprogram. So to undo all of those learned behaviors, that's the surface of you that has nothing to do with you. The conditioned version of you is not the pure you, is not the innocent you, is not the creative you, is not the horror, is not the soul. That's all resistance. We call it resistance. It's learned behavior. And so we help actors deconstruct that. And at the same time, <coughs> we help actors actually wake up the instinct so that on one side, you're helping your learned behaviors, your controlled mechanisms to really, really stabilize and calm down and undo themselves because they're not authentic to who you truly are. They're learned from others, for others, and for no fulfillment of yours or for no impact that you could give. And on the same time, what we're waking up, which is your truth, which you haven't used in a very long time since you were conditioned, is your instinct. And so we lower one and encourage the other. And by that happening, then you can progressively rewire yourself, transform yourself into the person that you were born as and born to be, which is truly, authentically you. And so if you're committing to a character, you're committing to that character and you're bringing all of your authenticity freely to this character and they become more important than you because your ego has already been taken care of. So you're not doing the play to glamorize your ego, to puff it up, to get validation. You don't need that anymore. You have inner validation, self-love, inner trust. You don't need confidence. Confidence is to look good with others. And I know that this can be you know, contradictory to what you might be hearing, especially on social media, where everyone will tell you how to be confident and strong. And confident and strong is a mask that you wear to look good for others. Um, as an artist, your vulnerability, your grief, your joy, your anxiety, everything's gold. And, and so you want to be able to be with that comfortably in the discomfort of your own feelings so that that is available like painting, like your paintbrush, it's like your material for your character. If you can't be with your own self, with the truth of your own self, there's no way that is available for your characters when you're showing up and performing in front of an audience, right? So I hope that this makes sense. If, um, if it does and you're wanting some more information, you can send us a DM and we can... Um, yeah, let you know how it works and when we open registration. And if you're wanting to move forward with a little bit of um, a free training, for example, we have something called Stop Trying to Be a Good Actor. Um, so you have a chance of being great. And that's a free training that we have in the About section or in the link in the bio if you're on Instagram. And so you can download that and start already on that path of, um, yeah, 
of not being in the delusion of trying to be good and be liked and be validated and be safe and be loved, but really be here for your character. All right. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Claude. And um, thank you guys for joining and have a great week. Bye.